What's going on, everybody? Hopefully your week has been going pretty good so far. I know we're on Wednesday, the mighty hump day of the week. Only a couple more days left until the weekend. And I keep pushing the video that I want to come out that day a day later. So hopefully it does come out tomorrow, the one I had planned for yesterday, then to today. But this stuff keeps popping up about, you know, breaks that are in question and, you know... It's pretty much like a repeat thing that keeps going on over and over and over again. But this was actually uh, published in Sports Card Scammers Facebook group. And I'll put a link in the description. That way you guys can go in there if you want to read through all the comments and stuff like that. You can. This, again, was a Facebook group, break, or Facebook group break. The breaker involved was allowed to break in that group by the admin. He doesn't, I guess, run the group or is an admin or whatever they're talking about in there. But um, with it, he is now no longer a member of that group. He has done multiple breaks in the group. Um, the, he's broke the same way in a few other breaks as well, too. One of them was uh, shown in there. And to me, if I was... The owner or admin of that group, I'd have booed the guy off of one break being that way. Just because, you know, your reputation, your group's up for on onto it along with the breaker itself, regardless if you boot them or not. But even if I allowed somebody to break in a group that I was already breaking into, if I didn't see how they broke originally, I would be like, nah, dude, you got to go live now. Let me see what you got. Get a box or something for yourself and let's see how you do it. Because we could change cameras around, make sure everything looks, you know, tight. Because you just don't want the bad publicity really to go out. <clears throat> um, all right. So, with that being said, the, the individual that is the breaker did respond to a post. It's now taken down. I'll talk about that after we go through all this. No, I did not change the man's voice in this. It may come in low because I'm trying it a different way streaming. Um, but just bear with the sound of it opening and stuff like that. The pack's opening. If it's real low, you might have to jam your volume up even more. I'm not too sure, but I will probably talk a little bit during three of the packs that are being opened. They were all open the same way. I'm just not going to bore everybody with 47 or 49 minutes of video. That, that would just be horrible. I, I, I just can't do it. <laughs> If it was like a 15-minute break, I'd throw it in at the end like I did before. But with that being said, if you guys want to know the names of all the parties involved into it, like I said, go to the Facebook uh, scammer group. It'll be on there. The link will be in the description if you want to go there. All right, let me pull up this video. I know it's what everybody's been waiting for. And I'm going to pull up my little control thing here. We're going to try this. I've had a couple practice runs at this now, <laughs> doing this. And I had to, this is like probably like the fourth or fifth time I've done the video now. No joke. All right, so we're going to open it up right here. And then I'll pause it yeah. shortly. Pack of one down. Some good stuff so far. All right, I had Jeff with his. I need to get my boy Giovanni. Something. Because he's been patiently waiting for that nice gold. Lawrence. All right. So first card up. Goes to the Texans, which is Brian Catlin. Brandon Cooks. 43 out of 99. Fitting. Brandon Cook's out 99. Fitting for the video. Fitting for the video. All right. Just so everybody knows, these cards are out of order. This is what the guy said. He takes them off screen so that he could put those, um, I call them the dummy cards in that you get into like Panini and Tops packs or sp like spacers supposed to help with people weigh in packs and all that stuff. He puts that between every single card. Why you need to do that is besides me. You're sliding that against already a chromish finish onto the card, which I'm not a fan of. I mean, I got it when you're trying to do big hits with the suspense and all that. I got it, but for every single card, you don't need to do that. It just shows the inexperience that's going on out there with this. 
Yeah, everybody's seen him take it off camera. If you watch the reflections in the top loaders, you could kind of see with it. But it's just horrible, horrible. And you can see his little, I guess, stands to his left and right for all the hits and stuff like that. I'm just not a fan of it. I, I'm just really not. All right, I'm going to move to the next piece here, so give me a second. Oop, just had it. All right, we'll move to the next pack here. But you guys can start seeing the reflections better in there. Notice how quick he goes back and forth with doing this. Just organize them so we can pack. Make this look easy. Alright, first up goes to the Chiefs. Rusty Bordeaux. Patrick Mahomes. No. He states, I just take them off screen and do this to make it easier. I I I, I just don't get it. And he gets real low when he states it like he knows he's doing wrong right here. He knows it's wrong. All right, we'll move to the last one. This is the clip that's mostly been seen on social media. So you guys might have seen this already. About right, right here. Last pack, guys. I'm not the Cowboys. I'm sorry. I thought it was Flacco. Lauren, that's you. I apologize for that. I'm sorry, Lauren. Normally you get, normally he gets the Cowboys on my break, so it's a habit. And we're off screen again. You normally don't get the Cowboys. All right, who we got? And our last ups goes to the Steelers. Who would be? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Garrett Lester? Najee Harris? Nope. All right. So you guys can see it takes a little bit longer there. There's more action going on with what you could see in reflections there. And that's what a lot of people are talking about. And there's no telling. He could switch something. He might not have. But while you take it off screen is besides me and then reorder the cards, I don't like that because you get to see them all. We don't know what's going on behind here. You could be the most honest guy that I know. As soon as you take it off, done. I'm done with it. I understand access may happen where you bump your camera over and stuff. And you know what? That's why you should have dual cameras, in my opinion. But, you know, stuff like that happens. I got it. But this here, it's, it's inexcusable. All right, back to my key points on to this real quick that we already hit. This was a Facebook group. It was a breaker inside the Facebook group that was, like, nowhere in charge of it. He is no longer there. He did post in the sports card scammer. Uh, I want to say it might have been late last night, maybe early this morning, somewhere around there, that he is not a scammer. He makes low profit off this stuff. I mean, just by saying stuff like that and capitalizing it, not good in my opinion. He also stated that he had shoulder surgery two weeks ago, and that's why he pulled him off screen because he's in pain. My thoughts. Well, if you're in pain, I don't hear you in pain at all. And why didn't you mention something about it? Even if you're in pain... Keep the stuff on the screen. It's not a hard concept. He even says he knew what right and wrong was by somehow in one of his statements, and I wish it was still up there, 
like basically saying he knows the right thing with breaks or something like that or breaking 101. And it was all on him, not the group, for the way he did this. Well, he was doing other ones like this, too. I, I got it. You got shoulder surgery. It's still no excuse. None at all. None at all. On to it. You knew what was right from wrong, and you continue to do it, and you put yourself in question along with that Facebook group that was allowing you to do multiple breaks. This is the other thing somebody posted, which I thought was interesting, and I'll pull it up. So, as you guys can see, look where his thumb is at. Right on the auto. <laughs> right on the auto. This is why I, I prefer to wear gloves, in case I mess up when I'm flipping cards around, if my thumb's sweaty, or I don't want to smear the, the autograph. Because there were so many that started using, like, this uh, marker to where it was smearing easily that I wouldn't want to do that to somebody's card. But yet, we're going to put our thumb on it here. Just not good. Not good at all. Very rookie mistake. If you know all the ins and outs like he was claiming on breaking, how did you not know to put your thumb there? That's why if you would have had these all down, not doing a little slide motion, you just pick the card up. Think about, uh, let me pull some of this down here real quick. Most breakers, say this is my box, they would set it up like this so you can't see what's behind it like that. My top camera still shows what's back here, as you can see in my hand. It still has the element of surprise. Nobody's getting to see what the next card is and all that, you know, stuff like that. Why not do that? Obviously, you aren't looking at somebody that's experienced been doing it for five-plus years that you're trying to mimic because you're giving a bad rep to every breaker out there, regardless of who they are. And trust me, I was a breaker for a while. No longer do it. I'll do personals if people want me to open it up and stuff. That I don't really consider that breaking. You know, just open the product up and I'm putting your stuff in some top loaders and stuff for you. Some people like that. Call them personal breaks. But with doing group breaks, it's a different realm completely. And once one bad thing goes out, everybody is under that microscope across the board. Regardless of who you are. And I'm going to say with now with all these breaks that have been going on, I would probably say half of them can't even keep the product on camera. They're doing something wrong, randomized. Heck, I saw somebody using a duck race for a randomizer. A duck race. It's some computer thing. It's supposed to be random. Can't we just stick to the basics? I mean, yeah, it looks cool and everything like that. But, you know, keep to the basics. Don't put yourself out there. For something crazy like that. I mean, if you want to do something like that, I, I don't even know. I wouldn't do it. I just why I, I prefer the verified random.org account. There's no way anybody could say anything against you. The code stays up for 30 days. And even if it got protest after 30 days, random.org could step in off the code and figure it all out. Anyhow, with date and timestamps and all that. But yes, random.org was hacked a while ago. A lot of these randomizers could be very easily hacked. I mean, we it went on a while ago, and it's probably still going on today, to be honest. That's a different subject for a different time. But let me know what you guys think, what you all saw in the video, as always, because a lot of times I don't catch it all, because I get focused a lot of times watching other different aspects. It's, you know, what I call breaking 101 into me. And a lot of times with footage and doing the editing and knowing what to look for for splice marks on I, I don't know i'm way beyond below rookie status even on that i mean i just learned how to do that thing with the video today on to here i mean it wasn't as loud i'll still try to figure that piece out but after you do it so many times you're just like all right this is good let's get this out for the information right now but yeah i mean lots of stuff wrong with it overall and then to use the excuse that you had surgery for the reason why, I just don't buy off onto that. It's an excuse. You could have been like as simple as I messed up, I'm sorry, blah, 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 and all that stuff. You know, let other people be like, oh, he just had shoulder surgery and stuff like that there. But, you know, you should have still found a different way. Fix your way your camera is, get a second one if you're going to do crazy stuff like that. But, Overall, you're not going to be a successful person out there if you do stuff like this by not keeping product on the screen. That, that's the one thing that you have to do properly is keeping it on the screen 
And so many people fell at that. So many. I mean, I, I sit there all the time and I get hit with, oh, so-and-so's live on IG right now. And I, I looked at a couple of them. I'm like, oh, another person breaking retail at six times the cost. Getting $300 for a $50 hanger box or blaster box that I could buy on eBay. I, that's why you don't see me getting a lot of breaks anymore to where I'm posting my hits and stuff because I'm not in them. I, if I do get in breaks, it's very seldom. And it's for like a hobby exclusive only that I'm chasing something for either PC or maybe I'm going to see if I can hit the big fish for once, you know, something like that there. But to me, I'd rather buy my own product and open up. I mean, I had this conversation, I think with Joey the other day, why would I go out and spend I'm just, I don't know what it was. I'm just throwing this out there. Like $3,000 in a flawless break for the Hornets where more than likely you're not going to hit anything. When I pretty much probably spend was about four or $5,000 just get my own briefcase. And I get all the hits inside it. I may not add up to what it's worth, but at least I get something return to look at. Uh, that's just me though. But let me know what you guys think about the whole thing. Kind of crazy to me that we keep, well, actually, I have to keep posting stuff like this. Um, but in the long run, it makes us better at, as a community, especially with people knowing what to look for, always doing their research on their breakers, checking how they do their breaking and everything else like that out there. If I was somebody out there, I know Breaker Culture did this before where they had people rating their breakers and stuff out there. I don't know if they still do it. And they probably don't because there's probably thousands of people breaking nowadays. But you should be able to go through there and look at the comments of what people would say about the breaker. You know, they might have a fabulous breaking method, but their shipping method and shipping time sucked. You know, stuff like that there to where it helped you eliminate what you were looking for. Were you willing to wait? for poor shipping or late shipping to get in this person's break and stuff like that. All right, everybody. Take care of a good rest of the week. The other video should be out tomorrow. It's more of like a question, a general question that uh, has been being talked about and discussed. It's no way, as I said before, is it a pinpointed anybody out there or anything. It's just with everything that's surfacing um, with fanatics. What I call the fanatics takeover. A lot of the younger people doing breaks and everything like that. But you guys will see the video hopefully tomorrow. Remember, Saturday's the show. There's no overtime Friday night. The following Saturday, we will do the live um, fixed pricing slash auction between me and CBC. If anybody else is interested in doing it and I've dealt with you or Joey's dealt with you, just hit us up and we'll try to get you slot in for a time if you want to come on and give it a shot. Other than that, guys, take care. Have a good week. And hopefully if I do go live from the card show on Saturday, it looks pretty decent. It'll be off my phone. I don't usually stream from a phone, so it'll be quite different. Might not be able to read comments. I, I don't know. But catch y'all next video.